first of all i ordered this kit of 10 pieces and it's really cheap just one dollar per set and it has the board as well as all the smd components you can see how tiny each of those components is and i like that this kit has all of the possible sizes so you get an exposure and experience with all the possible smd components used next i had to order some solder paste this is like a glue sort of thing which actually has the solder and flux both powdered and made into a paste and then I also ordered some flux separately plus I ordered a tweezer to be able to place the components during the reflow process it is important to keep an eye on the temperature of the board for this I bought this very cheap non-contact thermometer which is able to give me temperature readings from a distance and you can see here how it operates so now let's start with the kit so as you can see this is the board and all the components that it comes with and there are two parts to the board on one side of the board is a timer circuit which blinks LEDs and on the other side is simply an array of resistors which you can try soldering and practice with we'll be soldering the blinky lights part of the circuit today so let's get started I first started by opening up the solder paste tube, taking a little bit out and starting to apply that on the board using a toothpick. Once that is done, I started placing the components using a tweezer and because I had already hand soldered the board once, I knew which component goes where and how to give a correct orientation to the LEDs and diodes which are sensitive to the orientation in which they are placed. and now the board goes into a pan so let's discuss our plan of action here here is a typical reflow profile that I was able to search and the two key numbers that I see here are 180 degrees and 220 degrees so what I want to do is slowly heat the board up let it reach 180 degrees and then let it reach 220 degrees afterwards turn off the gas I notice that the paste initially turns darker. You can also notice the line of paste that I placed for the ICs because the pads were just too close to each other. And the light that you see is the infrared thermometer. I am using it to keep an eye on the temperature of the board. You can also notice that the components don't appear to be placed very correctly. But it's okay because during the reflow process, once the solder melts, it pulls the component into the right place. You can see a little bit of flux evaporating from the board in this video. Look, most of the paste has melted and it has turned shiny. So we will keep an eye on the temperature and as soon as it hits 220 degrees we will turn off the gas. Some of the pins of the IC have bridged together so we will have to fix it using manual soldering. Also I noticed that one or two pads are actually missed out. So this is because of not placing the solder correctly initially on the board. So the final board is looking quite good for a first time experiment. I think I have put too much paste because of which the solder paste appears like blobs on the component pads and there are some shorted pins of the ICs as well as some pins are missing. So this will be taken care of when I attempt this again. So now let's compare. This is the hand soldered board and as you can see some of the pads are not very shiny that's because the solder hasn't melted correctly. In addition to that this was a lot of effort and it took a lot of time to solder each component individually by hand. Compared to that this board which is done using solder paste is looking much cleaner and much shinier on the edges which means that the solder has melted and solidified really well. In addition to that, this was much faster to do. Here are the two boards side by side. The left board is hand soldered and the right board is today's board made using the reflow process. As you can see, the right board looks quite cleaner and it took much lesser time to make it. 
I'll be fixing those small shoulder gaps and some missed pads and then let's see if the circuit works. Nice, so I was able to get it to work. This was a very awesome experience for trying out reflow soldering for the first time. It actually turned out to be quite easy and the basics and the science of it and keeping care of the temperature is actually pretty straightforward once you understand it. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and sharing the video with your friends as well as subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with my video series. See you in the next one.